WCW is simultaneously remembered as one of the most beloved pro wrestling promotions and one of the industry's biggest failures. The cornerstone of the National Wrestling Alliance, Jim Crockett Promotions eventually turned into World Championship Wrestling, but throughout both of their histories, the tag team division was always a highlight of their weekly television programming. And along with having some of the best teams, the music that led these warriors down that aisle is some of the greatest of all time. With that being said, I'm Kevin Cal from Wrestling Behind the Themes. And here are the top 10 best NWA WCW tag team entrance theme songs ever. Originating in Jim Crockett Promotions, the Varsity Club was a heel collection of tremendous athletes, but also a bunch of mean jocks. I mean, these were the guys who pushed you into lockers, slept with your girlfriend, and acted like they were better than you, and you knew it. Consisting of the dog-faced gremlin Rick Steiner, Mike Rotunda, Dr. Death Steve Williams, and dangerous Dan Spivey, they all ran roughshod over JCP, and this song served as their all-star anthem. Marching to the ring to the generic Eric, yet upbeat and peppy fight song, Mr. Touchdown USA. The Varsity Club embodied the legitimate NWA style of professional wrestling. And with the games master, Kevin Sullivan, calling the shots, these amateur wrestling standouts would proudly show off the letterman jackets of their alma maters and braggadociously crow about their wrestling superiority. This jazzy, funky tune played a huge part in solidifying the dominant tag team of Doom in the late 1980s National Wrestling Alliance. The physically intimidating duo of Ron Simmons and Butch Reed, first masked and simply known as Doom Number 1 and Doom Number 2, before unmasking and using their real names again, were pushed to the moon upon debuting at the 1989 Halloween Havoc pay-per-view and scoring an upset win over the Steiner Brothers. Brothers. They also initially used Bob Seger's sultry smash hit, Her Strut, since they were managed by woman, aka the late Nancy Benoit. And a little fun fact trivia for you: Doom has the distinction of being the last NWA World Tag Team Champions before the name changed to WCW. One of the common threads that many wrestling historians and fans alike tend to always come back to is the vast mismanagement that WCW was famous for. Take the seemingly thrown together almost at random coupling of stunning Steve Austin and flying Brian Pillman that were then split up less than a year later. The Hollywood Blondes turned an unlikely pairing into a brush with greatness, practically gelling as a team overnight. And one of the reasons they were so over is because of how incredible their entrance theme was. Called Satan's Sister, this jam, with its menacing sneer of guitars and repetitive riff throughout, was quite the rocking tune for these two as they mugged for the camera. Now, WCW recycled the theme a few times during the Nitro years, but this banger will always belong to the Blondes. <laughs> The Rock and Roll Express is one of the most entertaining, high-flying babyface combos of all time. Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson were a pair of teen heartthrobs with their flowing mullets and colorful bandanas. Plus, they utilized ELO's 1950s tribute song, Rock and Roll is King, for their entrance theme, which resulted in eardrum-shattering shrieks emanating from throngs of teeny boppers for their arrival. In an era when wrestling fans would only refer to the team as Ricky and Robert, they punctuated their matches with their trademark double-drop Dropkick. But truth be told, it's not known if anyone actually heard their theme song, because as soon as that first Jeff Lynn lick played, the female crowd was sent into a frenzy. All right, I might be cheating a little bit on this one here, but the Four Horsemen are regarded as one of the greatest stables of all time. Of course, there were many variations of this group, but the majority of them maintained a high level of excellence. After all, they were the symbol of excellence. Now, once they finally got a theme song to accompany the cool heel demeanor, they were gifted with an amazingly impactful song that hits hard and heavy like a Ric Flair chop. 
co-written by the one and only Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. The sound of Wild Bucks, not Young Bucks, Wild Bucks running at the start already clues in old school wrestling fans to what's about to happen. The Horsemen have arrived to deliver some amazing promos, hand out some vicious beatdowns because diamonds are forever and so are the Four Horsemen. Dan Spivey and Sid Vicious were both two big, imposing specimens who weren't necessarily the best talkers or performers, but they each had that look. And when paired together, they seemed to be a lock for tag team dominance for years to come. Unfortunately, a series of injuries and unfortunate circumstances transpired. And within a year's time, the skyscrapers had crumbled. And the original team of Spivey and Vicious weren't even a part of the team at the end. However, during their brief run, they had one of the most epic entrance themes courtesy of German rock band Scorpions. The skyscraper's slow walk to the ring was in step with China White's thundering bass chords and devastating intro riffs. Dare I say, it was Road Warrior-esque. No tag team in the history of the sport can truly hold a candle to the Legion of Doom. Even to this day, wrestlers still refer to that road warrior pop, and it's this music that depicted their bona fide bad assery to the fullest. Iron Man is classic heavy metal at its finest. The song from the 1970s Paranoid album remains a perennial guitar favorite and is arguably Black Sabbath's most definitive piece of work. Guitarist Tony Iommi's groaning intro is downright belligerent, much like Hawk and Animal, who regularly snacked on danger and dined on death. As pioneers of the modern squash match, the LOD had the look, the power, and the strength, and the adulation of the fans who loved the spectacle of these two no-selling face-painted Hellraisers. But the only downside is that their entrance barely ever made it to Black Sabbath's powerful opening riff. But what a rush it was when it did. Whether it's lover boy Dennis and beautiful Bobby, or beautiful Bobby and sweet Stan Lane, the Midnight Express are universally regarded as a must on the Mount Rushmore of tag teams. Trendsetters inside the ring, Jim Cornette's team made everything look easy as they invented new double team moves and processed to the ring accompanied by an intergalactic musical masterpiece. The Midnight's intro song was a revamped rendition of the song Chase by composer Giorgio Moroder for the 1978 Midnight Express film. Certainly, this iconic song was what many people would refer to as ahead of its time, as this tune has become reborn thanks to FTR's current AEW entrance theme. Mysterious, moody, and undeniably 80s, everything about this track adds a richness to the already illustrious tag team, called by some the greatest that ever lived. It is truly a fact, Jack, that the fabulous Freebirds revolutionized tag team wrestling during their Hall of Fame careers. Led by Michael P.S. Hayes, Terry Bam Bam Gordy, Buddy Jack Roberts, and Jimmy Jam Garvin, the Freebirds are also widely regarded as the first ever rock and wrestling act to have created their own original entrance theme song before anyone else jumped on that bandwagon. Written, recorded, and released in the early 1980s, Bad Street USA is a bona fide rock and roll song featuring a raging riff, an easy-to-sing-along-to chorus, and some bad-to-the-bone lyrics about the baddest street in the whole USA. Born and bred to be sports entertainers, the charismatic Freebirds may not be considered the greatest faction in all of pro wrestling, but their legendary theme song paved the way for entrance music to become a mainstay in the sport we all know and love. With 10 WCW Tag Team Championship reigns under their belt, Harlem Heat holds the record for the most tag team title reigns in the company's history. Brothers Booker T and Stevie Ray beat the brakes off of suckers for years and made it look and sound so good with this theme song marking their arrival. Originally used as just production music for highlight reels and vignettes, this everlasting banger is called Rap Sheet. And according to the Booker Man himself on his Hall of Fame podcast back in August 2020, when asked about this 
this theme. He said when you heard that song, you knew it was Harlem Heat. And no matter what color you were, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, you were gonna start rocking. Truer words have never been spoken. Now can you dig that? Sucker!